Ave Maria, welcome back to No Apologies. So today we're going to begin another series of apologetics here on Air Maria and having just finished up our six steps to the Catholicism series, it seemed fitting that we could begin now to look at some of the specific teachings of the Catholic Church and we're going to begin with the Eucharistic series. So what exactly does the Church teach about the Eucharist? For 2,000 years she has taught that Jesus Christ is truly present in the Eucharist. Under the appearance of bread and wine, Christ is completely present in His body, His blood, with His soul, and with all His divinity. So during the Mass, the moment the priest says the words of consecration, this is my body, and this is my blood, God miraculously changes bread and wine into Jesus Christ. It becomes Him. He's not just spiritually present. He's there with His hands and His feet. He's looking with His eyes. He's listening with His ears. His heart is beating, He is breathing. So that the only difference between us kneeling before the Eucharist and the Apostles kneeling before Christ 2,000 years ago is in the appearance. In the Eucharist, the outward appearance of the bread and wine and the sensible qualities, the touch and the taste of the bread and wine still remain. But the substance of the bread and wine is transformed into the substance of Christ. The bread and wine are gone, they no longer exist. They've been replaced by the real presence of Jesus, while just their appearance remains. The Church teaches that Jesus is truly and wholly present in both the consecrated hosts and in the consecrated wine, as well as in each of its tiniest parts. So the smallest and tiniest crumb of the host, or just a single drop from the consecrated chalice, contains the whole and entire Christ. Now because we believe that the Eucharist is Christ, Rightly then do we adore the Eucharist as God. That's why we genuflect before the tabernacles where the Eucharist is reserved. That's why we have processions in honor of the Eucharist. And that's why we put the Eucharist on our altars for people to come and to adore our Lord. And we even have some chapels dedicated to the adoration of our Eucharistic Lord 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We take the Eucharist out of the tabernacle, expose Him on the altars, for the faithful to come and adore Him whenever they would like. Once Christ's presence begins at the words of consecration, it remains as long as the appearance of the, blood, of the bread and the wine remain. So when the consecrated host or the wine is dissolved or digested or diluted, and it no longer has the qualities of the bread and the wine, it is no longer our Lord. Now this teaching of the Eucharist is one that completely separates Catholics from Protestants. And it's here that we have to point out the error that it doesn't really matter what church you belong to. As long as you're trying your best, all churches really are the same. Here we can't be indifferent because we're talking about a fundamental issue which would mean either A, a grave sin of idolatry on the part of Catholics if the Eucharist was just a symbol as Protestants proclaim, or B, a grave sin against the faith of Christ on the part of Protestants if the true presence is a reality as Catholics proclaim. So logically, both can't be right. So it's my hope that in this upcoming series of vlogs to show that the teaching of the Catholic Church concerning the Eucharist is solidly founded on sacred scripture, is found in the writings of the early Church Fathers, and is supported and is reinforced by over 2,000 years of historical evidence. So I look forward to this time with you on our next series as we take a look at one of the greatest gifts that Christ gave us in literally fulfilling His promise that He would be with us always in the gift of the Eucharist. Thanks for joining me. Our no apologies. Ave Maria.